as we open this bag, the first thing that pops up here is this awesome letter for Paul Rabel. That looks a lot like me, actually. Lacrosse rules. Yes, it does, Jorge. Lacrosse rules. I don't think I'm smarter than other athletes. I think by virtue of being a professional lacrosse player, where both of our pro leagues are part-time in nature, I have more time than most pro athletes to invest in this. And I just have like a ton of interest in media and tech. Most professional athletes are part of big time revenue sports. Their audience is already baked in to the equation. They get drafted, the NBA talks about it, they promote them, and they, they get fans. They rely on what we call linear media. Linear traditional media does not cover lacrosse. I'm a lacrosse player. I'm a professional lacrosse player. There's a professional league. How can I grow? I need to build an audience. So at the advent of, of social media proliferation was also the time I graduated from Johns Hopkins in 2008 where Facebook launched their fan page capabilities. So I looked at social media, specifically Facebook, as the only viable media outlet that I could build a connection with a lacrosse fan and communicate with them as often as I like. What's going on guys? Paul here. Um, what date is it? Got my shaft here. Got a roll of tape. As we've seen over the past 10 years, social media has now turned into a form of new media, no longer alternative. It's the main form of media. So the fact that we were early adopters in Facebook and then even Instagram, Twitter has been beneficial. Have we monetized off of our YouTube channel, off of our podcast, on occasion off of Instagram through branded content? Yes. Um, but that can't be your strategy. And we try to identify our audience, where they are, what our story is, and how we can marry the two. Dream of California. We are in LA and we're underway. And we've got the boys. Chris, shout out. Where are you from, man? Um, I'm from Orange County. Yeah. I'm Paul Rabel. And I'm Drew Westervelt. And we're going to chuck a ball over the Inner Harbor. <laughs> that was felt like a tipping point emotionally for me that like, wow, I can create content from my GoPro or as simple as my mobile device and publish it, generate attention, create attention, conversation, and then bring momentum back to the sport and what we're building in way of businesses. That's an awesome experience to go through. You just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. And this is what we got. This is why we built the YouTube channel. <laughs> We're trying to keep you guys entertained, try and share our message, grow the game, and build relationships over the phone. <laughs> That's what effectively YouTube is, right? Yeah, just Building relationships with each of you. Do you guys ever play wall ball? pass it off the brick wall and the ball come back and smack you in the face because you're not wearing a helmet. I was passing behind the back trying to catch around the world like my boy Matt Gibson and this happened. I think we do a, a, a hybrid version of, of well-produced content that also is kind of first person and raw, meaning you know, do we on occasion record ourselves from our mobile device and, and talk through what we're doing? Sure. Welcome to the Wednesday before Halloween special. But we'll pull out GoPros, high quality DSLRs, and vlog, then cut all that footage, log it, take it into post, edit it using Final Cut Pro or Premiere, sync it up audio with music, and tell a better story, upload it to YouTube. The consumer today, they want to feel like they're sitting in the room with you or out on the field while you're practicing. 
YouTube specifically, I like to tell people who ask me this who are starting a YouTube channel themselves, is when you're holding the camera, this motion and this type of connection almost feels like you're holding the hand of the person who's watching. When I'm here, I'm still the same distance from the camera if someone's recording me. That psychology connection is the same as if, you know, kind of what we're doing right now. Now, if I were to stand up and grab it and answer your question like this, it just feels different. Paul Rabel Experience is a technology company. Rabel Events is an event business that utilizes technology to create a better experience than what we feel is out there in the marketplace. And one of the companies that I'm an investor in is League Apps, and they're a registration portal, also hybrid CRM, that allows us to plug in using their technology to our back office and give the users a customized experience on registration. And that's been useful because that also builds our database so we can communicate day of event, during the event, after the event, uh, which is critical to building a sustainable business is not just the property, the product or the service that happens, but everything leading up to it and after is how you build a loyal customership. Across is something that if story told properly, can really resonate and will continue to resonate with millennials and Gen Zs. We try to get to a point where people know, oh, that lacrosse guy's Paul Rabel, but you know, I would suspect before Tony Hawk really started cutting deals with ESPN and taking X Games to the next level with the right partners, people knew that there was a skater that weren't in the community that was making waves. Love to get Tony Hawk on our podcast. Tony, if you're listening. <laughs> Why we like action sports so much is that they were comprised of, early on, the most athletes that were creating media in a really innovative fashion. What I like about Tony Hawk is he was able to maintain his success as an athlete while simultaneously telling a broader story, leveraging media, and, and helping grow that sport at a professional level. We're a part of a sport that's still in its nascent stage at the professional level. And by virtue of that, we have an opportunity to serve as a proxy for change, potentially the first like, niche team sport to where what we think at least take to mainstream. We can confidently say that there is no other athlete in any sport who's producing as much content on a weekly basis as we are and building the businesses that we are from scratch from our event business, to our technology company, to the media that we're putting out. There's no other athlete on the planet that does it.